show with you always is your host nurse man dan let me go ahead and pause that because that's looping um so tonight's episode is going to be a reintroduction to what this show is about over the past couple of months and actually since i've started doing the show i have gotten so much hate from people who come at me saying i'm too aggressive i'm an asshole i'm mean i'm this and that i don't care I want you to understand something. I am a nurse and I don't care about feelings. I am here to get people to live the longest, healthiest lives they are able to do while they are on this earth. Bottom line. Okay. I don't care about anything else. So when I go into some of the things I go into and I say, these are the problems that I see as a nurse It's what I see as a nurse. I'm not coming out here to shame people, although I think we need to shame some people because they they obviously don't get it in their heads enough as to what they need to be doing to take care of themselves. So with that in mind, let me just go back to the beginning. All right. Nursing school. I went for the wrong reasons. I went to nursing school to meet women. Okay. I probably took a spot from somebody who actually wanted to go to nursing school. Um, and that's too bad for them, I guess. Uh, you know, and I met my ex-wife the very first day of nursing school and I have a beautiful daughter with her. All right. After I graduated nursing school, I went into the ER. I was there for four, four and a half years um, where I learned quite a bit, but I still didn't realize what being a nurse was about. You know, in the ER... Things happen so fast. It's in and out, in and out, in and out, right? You're either coming in and you're dying and we stop you from dying or you come in for some bullshit excuse and then we treat you and street you, right? That's across the board. In the time I was in the ER, this is at the emergency room I worked at. And the entire time I was there, I would say maybe maybe 15% of the patients that I you know, cared for were emergency room visits, maybe 15%. All of the other visits were people that came in for bullshit stuff, right? A stubbed toe. I had a guy who was 55 years old. I remember his name and I remember his birthday. And I remember he came in and he wanted me to clean his ears out. And I remember asking, what is wrong with your ears? Why can't you do this? Are you in pain? And he wasn't. He told me, man to man, he said, I just don't like cleaning my ears. So I'm like, okay, I'm not putting you in a room for this. It's not an emergency. So I went and I asked my boss. I said, hey, I got this 55-year-old man here who says he just doesn't like to clean his ears out. Do I have to give him a room? Which he said, yes, because we are a healthcare system of just making people happy. It's not about getting them better. It's all about customer satisfaction and how they feel and to make sure they they feel good, right? I don't care about that. That's not what I am here for as a nurse. My goal as a nurse, like I said, was to get people to live the longest, healthiest lives they are able to while they are on this earth so that they can spend it with their family and their friends and their loved ones. My job is to not make you feel good about the shitty lifestyle choices people have made. That would be poor nursing, in my opinion. So, like I said, four and a half years in the ER, about 15% of the entire patient population I saw was non-emergent visits, all right? After those four and a half years in the emergency room, I went to the operating room. It was an ambulatory surgery center. Uh, I did uh, eye surgeries, cataract, glaucoma, etc. It was absolutely, hands down, the most boring nursing job I've ever had in my life. You stood anybody, a sixth grader could have done what I did in the OR. And I don't want to piss off any OR nurses. I'm just saying in the one I was at, you know, I would bring the patient in. I would prep their eye. I might start an IV every now and then. And then I'd sit there in the corner quietly waiting for the patient to be done. And I did it 35 times a day. 
absolutely boring. There was no talking allowed. Uh, the doc, I really enjoyed the doc, but he he didn't like any of the women he worked with. He was constantly talking down to them. I remember there were times when I would tell him like, hey, watch this. And I would go do something and he wouldn't say shit to me. And then a, a nurse there or a fellow employee would go do something and he would get all over him for the same thing. So he was kind of a, a turd. He really was. Most surgeons that I've met are turds. They feel like they're gods. They're not. They're just human beings and they make errors all of the time. We need to get this through our head here that just because the doctors go to school longer doesn't mean they have your best interest at heart at all. How many times have you gone to your doctor and you feel like they've just blown you off? How many times have you tried to get an appointment and they don't get back to you? A lot. If you're in that, uh, in that stage of your life where you are using the doctor more and more, but the, and then, you know, to fast forward after that year in the OR, I went and I'm currently doing home health nursing. Now, this is where in my entire nursing career, I have learned more with this job than I have in my entire nursing career combined. All right. Literally, I see what keeps people in the hospital. I see what gets them out of the hospital. I see what it costs them, okay? Now, everybody has seen, I mean, if you're listening and you haven't seen, I do very much so preach about the terrible effects obesity has on our bodies. And I get an incredible amount of hate for it, right? And it's funny because usually it's only, for the most part, it's from Women and, you know, what I would consider to be betas standing up for them. Obesity is bad. It is absolutely bad for the body. That does not mean I hate fat people, okay? I love everyone like God wants me to. But obesity has not been a problem for thousands of years. This is new. Obesity for thousands of years was only reserved for the extremely wealthy, the ones that could afford to not do shit, they could afford the food, and they could afford to pay somebody else to do all of their stuff, right? And you look around nowadays, and it's sad to me, because I see little children incredibly overweight. I see young men, young women, incredibly overweight. Older people, most of the patients I see, incredibly overweight. What is that? Why is that happening? Right. And I, I'll tell you, people think I'm a, a conspiracy theorist, but it, it's technology one um, and our mental state in this country. We are so far away from God in this country. We want to be so comfortable all the time. Everybody has to be comfortable. Nobody wants to be uncomfortable. And what happens? Look at the numbers from 1916, I believe it was, to 2019. We've had almost a 40-year lifespan increase. 40 years. How many people do you know are living these extra 40 years to the best of their ability? Or how many do you know that are spending the last 20 to 30 of those in and out of the hospitals? We work all our lives. Is that what we want for ourselves? Is to spend the last quarter of our lives in and out of hospitals? The average doctor visit in this country is seven minutes long. Do you think that's enough time to get your questions answered? Do you, I mean, it's not. And the reason it's like that now, the reason it's going to continue to get worse is because doctors don't have time. And because they don't, because we're so PC now that you can't tell a patient, even though obesity is a medical disease, I'm not saying you're a little corn fed. I'm just saying you, the obese population, right? That is a medical classification. For the most part, I bet it's 90% of the obesity uh, cases in this country are related only to shitty lifestyle choices. It's laziness, or maybe not even just laziness, but the not, not knowing what they need to be doing. Your body cannot handle that kind of weight. It wasn't designed by Jesus Christ himself to bear that kind of weight. And we see what happens to the bodies when we do that. Joint pain, hypertension, diabetes, high cholesterol, depression, limited mobility, bed sores. It's all there. And these people don't have to do that. 
They don't have to live like that. But a doctor doesn't have time or, and or they don't care because if they get you better, wh- where are they making money, right? I'm not like that, okay? I, don't, I could give a fuck less about this. I think the healthcare system at the top is corrupt. I think it's immoral. Uh, let me see. Sorry, I got a question. What would you say would be the best way of eating to lose weight? I'm not sure how to say your name, um, ma'am. Um, Ab, Ab, I'm sorry. It, the, if you want me to be honest with you, the best way to lose weight is to eat less than you're putting in. And I don't want you to, don't hang up yet. Don't, don't lose, don't go, don't go away yet. Let me just explain. If you wake up, okay, and I go to work as a home health nurse and I'm there six, seven hours, right? And I come home. Like a lot of nurses say, it's so hard being a nurse. Being a nurse is not a difficult job. It might be mentally tough, right? But I'll tell you what a tough job is, is roofing, slinging mulch, right? Those are laborious jobs. Those are hard jobs. So at the end of the day, when I get home from work as a home health nurse, if I don't go and do some form of exercise, whether it be go for a walk, whether it be go golf, uh, go to practice, whatever it is, I've done nothing for my body. And you look around and people, I I get it. I get it. We are so busy with our lives, but you got to put your lives first. If you're not taking care of yourself, you can't plan on taking care of anybody else down the road. I see it. So I would say, Miss Aberrant, the hardest part, eat what I tell people this. You don't have to focus on the diet as much. It's the moving part. You should eat less then you're burning, or if I got that right, you're just relatively healthy. We know that, I mean, a Mountain Dew has 200% of the daily sugar intake. And I used to drink those like three or four a day, energy drinks, all this shit. And it's terrible for us. And I know it's cheaper to go get a two liter of Coke than it is to drink water. But you know what? We got good, pretty good water in this country. Unless you're in Michigan, Flint, or wherever it is, drink it out of the tap. There's people across the world that don't have water we like like we do. There, there are people in third world countries living healthier than us. This is the United States of America. We need to hold ourselves to higher standards. I would say this, ma'am. Are you sleeping well? If you're still listening, do you sleep well at night? Because this would this is gonna no. Um, how do I do a call in? Can you call in? Let me see. Hmm. I was going to just talk to you. I'd rather talk to you just one on one if you're able to, or you can be on, come on if you want. I don't know how to do the call in. Um, not right now. My kid is too loud. Oh, you got kids. Great. Fantastic. Let me ask you a question. Honestly, Am, uh, cause I can see you messaging me. Am I saying your name right? Is it aberrant? Miss aberrant? Okay, cool. Miss aberrant. Um, how many children do you have? One. Okay. I got a four-year-old daughter. Uh, how old is your, how old is your, your baby, your child? Oh, just like mine. That's awesome. Uh, you love your child more than anything I would imagine. Cause you're probably a good parent like I do, right? You do anything for your child. It's unconditional love, right? Um, are you overweight, ma'am? Uh, now how tall are you and how much do you weigh? I won't, I won't say it out loud, uh, but I just kind of want to see where, where you're at. Five. Okay. Five, two. Okay. And how old are you, ma'am? Okay. I'm going to tell you this now. You are are so incredibly fucking young. Are you on a lot of medications? Perfect. You're not a diabetic? All right. I promise you, if you don't start to change the lifestyles you're living, you're 27, by the time you're 40, you're going to have a miserable life ahead. And like, it's the same thing I told my mother. I made my mother cry when I started this job. She's 54 and she was going down the stairs at my place one foot at a time. And I was like, what are you doing? She's like, I got to go one at a time. And I got really quiet 
And then I didn't say anything. And then she called me later that night and she said, what, what was that about? Ask me about the stairs for. And I told her, I said, mom, I love you. I need you around for me, for my daughter. And if you don't lose weight in the next 10 years, it's going to be impossible for you to come back from. And she cried. I didn't talk to my mom for two weeks. She didn't talk to me. Um, and then she came over uh, probably a month and a half, two months after. Ap- oh, there we go. Woo! Wait! Hell yes. So you came, to, you're what you said you weigh now and that's minus. Fantastic. So whatever you're doing, you got to, I mean, keep doing it. Do you feel better? You have to feel better. It's impossible for you to not feel better. Your joints have got to feel better. If you're not sleeping well, that's a, um, I will say, it, as far as sleeping, or do you sleep through the night? I'm not sure what this, you know, the life, a healthy life is a very symbiotic relationship of three things, which is what I tell everybody. Um, you know, God put us here on this earth to do work and to love each other. Okay. And you look around and you see, and I've looked up the numbers since the internet that went, you know, mainstream in 93, I think. And then you had Facebook come out in MySpace in 03 and 04. Since those two things have come out, the levels or the, the cases of hypertension, diabetes, high cholesterol, depression, anxiety, divorce, murder, suicide are through the roof. And people think it's this, this new, something's going on where everybody's woe is me. It's not new. It's because we're doing exactly what he told us not to do. If you look at the state of Washington, their depression rates are through the roof. And you know why? It's because it's rainy all the time there. So people stay inside and you look at the numbers and it's through the roof. But you go to Florida, Southern California, significantly lower. That's not magic. It's because where those people are doing what they should be. And when I see these people, they get older and they put on this amount of weight. And I tell people it's 65 is like the cutoff time. If you don't get, if you don't get your shit in line by 65, the, the chances of you being able to recover and come back are so small because it gets that much harder. We are not supposed to live as long as we are nowadays. It is only because of medicine. If everybody in this country stopped taking medicine tomorrow, there will be a significant improvement in traffic across the country, if that makes sense. We have too many people that are only alive because of all the medicine they're on. That's it. That is it. And I'm telling you, the first, you know, when I was in the ER, uh, I mean, I've seen infants die under my arms doing compressions all the way up to a 106-year-old, okay? Um, yeah, I hear you. I'm going to just keep talking about mine. Um, and... And then I I knew my grandma and she's 80 and she's been in bed roughly for the last 10 years. She's put on a lot of weight and it's painful for her. She does not feel good. Her body aches and she could be alive another 15 years. In my opinion, that's a 25 year prison sentence. 25 years she's spending in the bed instead of spending it with her family and friends. She can't go outside to hang out with my daughter and it's miserable. I see the tears in her eyes. So when I go into patients' houses, people think I don't talk like this to my patients. I absolutely do. I told a lady the other day, um, she was like extremely overweight, you know, the same set of conditions that I've seen for the past six, seven years as a nurse. It's all the same stuff. The only thing new I've seen was COVID. And I'll tell you another thing. The only reason COVID was so bad in this country um, is because we are so large. That's hands down. I was actually at a patient's house yesterday. And she had uh, the movie Jaws on. And I was just looking. I was like, look at this. I was like, look at all these kids running around this beach in the show. Look at all these older adults. And you might have seen a few older adults with a little fluff on them. But none of the kids were obese. None of them. That wasn't that long ago. So what is it that's happening to us? We know portion sizes in this country are terrible. That's one thing I ask patients of mine that are from, you know, European countries especially. I say, uh, have a great night, ma'am. And, uh, yes, ma'am. Thank you for listening. And I, God bless. Take care. Keep doing what you're doing. I promise you it pays off. You are going to not, no regrets over it. You're doing great. I love you. Have a great night. Um, 
And uh, where was I at? And I, I was asking the lady, you know, I was like, what, what happened? Have these kids, I mean, when, when you were growing up, ma'am, did you see a bunch of fat children running around? Were every, was everybody obese? And she said no. And she is incredibly obese. And I remember telling her straight to her face, I said, ma'am, if you don't change your lifestyle choices, if you don't start to put the work in, you are signing your own death certificate. And not just, you know, our deathbeds used to be relatively twivly, relatively quick, right? You get sick and then you, you kind of die. Now our deathbeds are extended 30 years. Is living this extra 30 years, if all you're doing is sitting inside and taking pills, is that really life worth living? I personally don't think so. My first week on this job, I met a 93-year-old man and a 93-year-old woman at two separate houses that still jogged every day. And it blew my mind. Like I said, infants dying all the way up to a 106-year-old. I've seen everybody die. And then I knew, you know, my grandma. So I kind of just assumed like, okay, well, after 70, life's fucked, right? There's nothing to do after that because you're just kind of in bed. And then I met these people and I asked them, what is it that you've been doing? How did you achieve this? And they all say, well, I stay active my entire life. I've stayed active. And that doesn't mean you have to run 10 miles a day. It just means you don't, you don't spend an entire day without breaking a sweat. You can't do that. And I'll tell you how I know this. I used to wear a thing called a whoop band, W-H-O-O-P. Um, and it really tracked your sleep levels as far as light, deep, and REM. And the body only recovers in deep sleep. So if you're not getting to deep sleep, your body, the damage we do to our bodies during the day does not get repaired. And how many people in this country right now are not getting sleep, right? All of them. I would say for the most part, I could tell anybody who's listening without a, without even looking at them, that if you aren't staying, if you're not doing anything physical during the day, I don't mean going to work because most people, when they go to work, what is it? They wake up, they waddle to the car. They waddle inside the office where they sit for eight hours staring at a screen where they waddle home. They waddle inside. They have their dinner where they sit and then they sit and watch TV and then they think they get good sleep. It's wrong. That is not how the body works. And I'm like, I'll explain it. This, this is the analogy I've used for all of my patients. Um, and they, they love it because it seems to them to make sense. All right. Imagine our bodies are these thousands of year old universities, okay? Where when your students graduate, they're not only doctors, they're not only lawyers, they're not only NFL, uh, NBA superstars, right? They are, they're all of those combined, okay? And this has been like this for thousands of years, right? So whatever time the school opens and the, the, the relevance of the school opening and closing is your sleep and wake times. So if for thousands of years, the school opened up at seven in the morning, Right? Those kids flooded in at seven in the morning and until the school closed or until our bodies go to bed, let's say eight or nine or 10, they don't go there to mess around. They go there to learn and to bust ass, right? They are the cream of the crop, all right? And this has been going on for thousands of years. So for thousands of years, that's been happening. And then the school closes whatever time you go to bed, let's say 10 o'clock, right? So for thousands of years, the school has closed at 10 o'clock. At 10.05, the cleaning crew comes in at night, all right? Six or seven guys, girls, whatever you want to have in there. I don't care. Let's get everybody in there, all right? For thousands of years, this cleaning crew comes in and they absolutely love their students like we love our children, right? They want them to succeed to the maximum ability. So if they come in and they see a little scuff on the wall, on the wall right? Not only will they get rid of the scuff, they'll rip down the entire wall and put up a brand new one. So that every morning for thousands of years, when these students come in, it's pretty much a brand new school, right? For thousands of years, never been any different. And then the industrial revolution and the internet technology creeped in, right? So here's what's happening now. You wake up, uh, you go to school or people think they're going to school and then they shut their TV off or they, you know, they close their school out, school down. And now about five minutes into the cleaning crew in there, right? Somebody opens the front door and lets about 30 little shithead students run in with muddy clothes, okay? These kids run through the halls. They run it. They make this big fucking mess. 
And then the cleaning crew is looking around. They're like, what the hell is this? This has never happened in thousands of years. So they're like, well, that sucks. So what do they do that first night? They go through and they get it all cleaned up. They get the whole school cleaned up, right? The mud and whatnot. The next morning, the students come in. It's 7.05 and the students walk into their homeroom class and they see one little piece of trash, just one. And it is such a shock to the community, to the school, that it shuts the school down. Everybody has to come look at this one piece of trash. And they're like, what is this? Why is this here? It's never been here, right? So they're like, okay, we'll, we'll take care of it. This We'll let them slide this time. So they pick up the trash and they throw it away. Now, if you continue to open that door up at night, instead of letting the cleaning crew do their job, what happens over time? It's not just one piece of trash, it's another piece, and then it's another piece. And eventually what happens is you have a shithole school. You have a school, imagine it sitting in the middle of a parking lot in the middle of summer with no air conditioning and all the windows shut. What happens in there? You get moldy, you get cranky, it stinks. The school does not live up to its potential because it wasn't taken care of. All right? That's why sleep is a super drug. It is the number one super drug in the world that especially in this country, we are not getting. If you don't exhaust yourself during the day, you, you don't get good, you don't deserve a good night's sleep. That's the truth. And the reason I know this, um, other than research, is wearing the whoop and tracking my sleep and activity levels. And I started this job last January and I was still wearing it at the time. And it was about eight months in and I went to pick up my daughter and my lower back hurt so bad. It was so tight. And I'm like, I am only, you know, 33. Why? Why does my back hurt so bad? It's never felt like that before, right? And I kind of looked. I was looking at my whoop band. And I was just looking at over the past few months. And it was my, my strain levels. The amount of cardiovascular output my heart was doing was so low. It was comparable to sitting on the couch all day. That's how difficult home health nursing is. It's not, is my point right? And at 33, after eight months of coming from a very active lifestyle to this job to where I can't be as active, you look, look at what happened to my body. So I was like, okay, I got to change something, right? So I, I used to box. So I found a place around here that does a little bit of um, martial arts. And I started doing that. Two weeks in, the back pain's gone. I'm sleeping like a boss. I'm waking up feeling refreshed. That is the, that is how life works. You have to open your school during the day. You have to stay attentive, active and learning. And then you have to shut that fucking school down at night. It's the same thing. If the, if the school opens and no students show up, if there's no activity, what happens over time? You get dust, you get dust everywhere. You get that same musty smell from a a school that is not being used. And if you don't do anything during the day, what does the night crew have to do? Nothing. They might have a little dusting to do, but there's no, there's, you're not giving them their job and they need to have a job. So I started doing all this stuff. And like I said, right back into sleeping well and, um, and feeling good. Back pain was gone. So it, when people, you know, ask like, what, what do I need to do? My first thing is I'll say, well, what do you do for exercise? And when somebody, I've had people tell me all the time. Well, you know, I walk to the mailbox and back. I have to tell them, sorry, that's not exercise. If you're exhausted from walking to the mailbox and back, you are incredibly out of shape. I mean, unless your mailbox is four miles from your house, but the average house, there's nobody on this earth right now who should be 70 and below that gets gassed going to the front door to get the mail. That only happens when you don't take care of yourself. That only happens when you get providers who are controlled by corporations that come in and buy hospital systems and dictate how physicians are supposed to treat. Physicians are not in control of healthcare anymore. There is no more personalized medicine. It's all algorithms. That's why you can't get into your doctor anymore. That's why when you do get in there, it's so fast because they are flooded with overweight people that had the same conditions over and over and over. Hypertension, diabetes, high cl- it's depression. It's the same shit. Same shit over and over. And the docs never say anything. 
or they don't say it hard enough. They aren't hard enough on their patients. That's why I come in. This is where I have learned that as much hate as I get, mainly from women, um, none of my patients, I've had one complaint as a nurse during home health, and it was because I wore my American hat, my America hat, and he complained about it. He didn't like it. Go figure, right? Somebody living in a very nice neighborhood, extremely wealthy, doesn't like America, right? Get the fuck out of here, right? That's the only complaint I've had. And like I said the other week, I had a lady who said, uh, you know, I've got a problem of, I just, I can't stop eating them until I'm full. And I don't think she was expecting what I said, but I said, ma'am, the problem is that you can't stop eating until you're full. I said, you have no self-control. To her face, I said, you could not eat for two weeks and your body, you'd be hungry, but you would be fine because you have enough reserve on you to last. And she looked shocked, teared up a little bit. And I said, I don't want this for you. She was like 74. She could have another 20 years on this planet, but she's not going to if she doesn't change her ways. And I talk like this to everybody and I tell them, if, if you don't want to put in the work, you can't expect the results. If you want to rely on pills, go ahead, be my guest. That doesn't mean your quality of life improves, okay? At all. It just means you are living longer with the shit you're doing to your body because of drugs. When we don't have to do that. And it, it's sad. I, do, I don't understand why I get so much slack and hate for the stuff I say, um, only from people that hear me. And it's never from none of my patients except the one. I mean, I've made plenty of patients cry telling them the truth. And I've had people call me afterwards months later saying, hey, I've been listening to your show. I had a lady, uh, she is 86. I saw her a few months ago. I gave her the same spiel I give everybody. And I saw her yesterday, the day before. She lost 30 pounds. And I was like, what happened? She was like, you really got into my head. You know, you told me what's up and I don't want to live like that anymore. And I was so fucking proud of this lady. It almost made me tear up because she gets it. She realized she feels better. Her energy levels are better. And it is sad because we aren't, you know, for the older population, I don't, I don't get onto them quite as much because some of them are so old and so out of shape that there's really I mean, like, what are you going to do for him? Like I said, after 65, I think if you, if you were that bad off and you don't change your ways, it's kind of a lost cause, unfortunately. But you look around, look at the people in there, the kids, the teens, 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s. Why are we all so large? It's because we're so comfortable being comfortable. It was not like this that long ago. The level of obesity was not even this high 20 years ago. It wasn't until this technology, which I think is the big devil. I mean, anything that makes it easier for the body is not good for the body, right? So, I mean, I mean, they even have fans in people's homes now. They have remotes. So instead of having to get up to flip the switch, you can just hit a little button. And that's one less time you stood up. Everything, you get everything ordered, curbside delivery. I'll tell you, COVID fucked that up too. When they started doing this, curbside delivery. I remember saying to a buddy of mine, I was like, that, this is going to be it for everything. This isn't going to be just because of COVID. People are going to get comfortable not having to get out of their cars, not having to walk to, uh, <laughs> sorry, I just got a text from somebody saying I should be a SWAT officer. Um, and what was I saying? Oh, and now everybody's so comfortable with that. So that's one less thing people are doing. You get groceries delivered. Everything's so easy for us now. It's not hard living in this country. You cannot have a tough life and be obese unless if you have and if you don't have a medical condition. And I, like I said, I'll bet eighty-five percent of people that are obese don't have genetic medical conditions that cause them to become obese. Okay, if you're born paralyzed. There's a good one. You got a thyroid issue. There's one maybe. There's some other ones. But other than that, if you can stand, you can exercise, right? So when people say, I don't have time, it's like, can you stand up? Then you can exercise. It's an excuse over and over and over again. There's excuses on why people don't want to have to put in the work. 
and it's costing them their lives and it's costing them their hard-earned money towards the end of their life when they should be vacationing and spending it with their loved ones. I don't know why that is so hard to grasp. And like I said, it's just people that, you know, either listen to the show or on my YouTube channel. They get, I get so much hate. Um, but it, I'm just, I'm telling you what it is. And if I could record my uh, patient visits, I would love to. Because I would love for everybody to hear, this is exactly how I talk to all of them. I don't treat anybody different. I treat everybody as they're my brother or sister, just like God intended to, right? Because I want everybody to live the longest, healthiest lives they can. I don't want them spending their hard-earned money in and out of the hospitals and on medications. The healthcare system at the top is corrupt. Pharmaceutical companies and insurance companies run healthcare. You get them coming in, and you got these corporations buying hospital system. Then they come in and they say, hey, let's see what insurance covers and what it doesn't. And then let's see what, you know, what they pay for as far as medication. And then they'll say, okay, well, this one they won't pay for. This one, this one, this one they will. We're going to only allow our providers to prescribe these because we can make the most money. Even though there might be a medication, maybe it's more money, that would be more beneficial to the patient They won't even offer it to you because they're not allowed. That's wrong. There is no more personalized health care. It's an algorithm. The same way when I say I do starts of cares. If you're 70 or up in this country and you work for the home health agency I work for, it doesn't matter if you jog every day. If you are 70 and up and you come out of the hospital, you are not safe to walk on your own. You're not safe to take your own medications. Uh, you're not safe to take a shower. You're not safe to do anything. When I see these people doing it, I've been in the houses to do a start of care. And I, I met um, one guy just comes off the top of my head. And after the visit, he lived on a third floor of an apartment building. I walked him out to his car. He wore a backpack. He didn't wear, use a cane or a walker. He walked down the stairs, walked to his car, and drove away. So I put in my assessment, hey, this guy was walking just fine when I'm there. Uh, he was a little emotional about some other stuff going on, but he walked downstairs, got in his car, and drove away. And then physical therapy goes in, and they, they have a whole different assessment. He's not safe to do this. He's not safe to do that. And what do I have to do? I have to go back in and change what I saw, because if I keep what I saw, they don't get paid that corrupt, immoral. And I have to have a job because I have child support. So I have, I have to go somewhat to a point with these people, but constantly, I might even start recording some of these, uh, post, um, start of care, uh, calls with my employer so that you can hear I mean, how incredibly immoral it is. We coddle, coddle, coddle. We, we, we treat them like they're dumb, like they can't do anything on their own. And, and it's a waste of money. I can't tell how many times they've sent me to houses where either I'll tell the person, Hey, you absolutely do not have to, uh, be the way you are. You don't have to be on all these medicines, right? Um, and, and it's just like nobody cares except the people I talk to. I don't care if I have to hurt feelings to get somebody better. That's my job. Maybe not to hurt feelings, but the rest of the stuff isn't working. Medications aren't working. They're only a Band-Aid, okay? You have to take care of your body. Otherwise, you're just lying to yourself. That's the truth. It's not hard. It's going to be a little uncomfortable at first, but that's it. Once you get into the rhythm of things, it's not that hard. Your endorphins, you'll start releasing hormones that are going to make you feel better for doing what you should be as God intended us. Right? That's why when people get older and they're overweight and they're inside all the time, they're also on antidepressants because they don't ever go outside and get the sunlight because they either can't walk or because they just don't want to, but they'll be more than willing, the doctor will be more than willing to prescribe a vitamin D supplement, right? 
you can't sleep, they'll be more than happy to provide some ambient for you, right? Instead of saying, hey, what time are you waking up? What are you doing during the day? Okay, well, you're not getting consistent quality sleep. You're not doing shit during the day. So no wonder you're not getting good sleep. They don't say that. They say, here's a pill, here's a pill, here's a pill. I don't fucking do that. That, that, that 86-year-old woman who lost 30 pounds because of what I told her, she is no longer on diabetic medications. How beautiful is that? Screw the system. Take money away from them. Keep it in your pockets. You don't have to spend your life in misery. And people think, oh, well, people should be comfortable in the way they are. Who the fuck says who? Facts are facts. The body is not designed to handle extra weight like we are seeing nowadays. You can't sit here and complain, oh, it's so hard. This country sucks so bad when you're, you know, 150 pounds overweight sipping a Starbucks. Are you kidding me? There are children across the world starving to death every day. Their lives are hard. What is hard about it here? Nothing. Nothing. Some people have it worse off than others here, but even homeless in America are living better than people overseas. That's sad. And we we just we don't we don't take care of ourselves, which is also sad. As a as a son of a father who was spent, you know, 21 years in the military. I, th- I think that's one reason I, I am the way I am because I've heard the stories about uh, what it is like overseas. So I, I, I have from his experience what it's like and it's nothing like here. This is the greatest country or it used to be. I think we're kind of, we're definitely slacking now with all this woke bullshit. Um, we're further and further away from God in this country. In fact, I think they're trying to kill God. I mean, they're trying to take him out of here. You can't even talk about it. You can't disagree with somebody without it being hate speech. What is hateful about what I'm saying? Obesity is bad. I want you to lose weight. Get off your ass. I don't think that's that bad. I think that sounds like some pretty common sensical stuff, right? Now, if I were to be like other nurses, I imagine, who don't really give a fuck, I could just go into a house, take your vital signs, make sure you're taking all your medicine and dip out. Hang on, guys. I'll be right back. Actually, you know what? I might have to call this one for right now, but um, I will be back. I'd love to talk to this uh, Miss Aberrant one more time. I'd love to get her on the phone um, and just walk. I'd love to talk to her like I talk to my patients and and get a feel for what she's doing. Because I promise you, you give me 30 minutes, Miss Aberrant, I will tell you the the easiest way to get healthy, the easiest way to lose weight, the easiest, cheapest way to feel better and live a longer, healthier life. It's very simple. It just takes work. And once you get through a week of really getting on that sleep hygiene, those consistent sleep-wake cycles, you're going to realize you've been fucking missing out for the longest time. (sighs) You know, Healthcare isn't about getting people better anymore. Uh, in my opinion, healthcare started with Jesus, right? Prior to that, what they do with the sick people, the lepers, they cast them out to these colonies where they go and die on their own, right? It wasn't until he came along and started healing people out of love. That's why the EMS logo, that staff, is Moses' staff representing Jesus. And now it's not about love. We are sickness promotion for profit. We don't care if anybody gets better. If you get better, healthcare fails, right? But imagine this. Imagine, you know, and this is another thing that people get upset with me about is, well, what about the people that can't help that they're fat? What about the people that have conditions to mean that they can't lose weight? And it's like for the slim ass percentage of people that that's actually the issue. Imagine the amount of money that would be able to go towards these people, right? Instead of going to people who who did it to themselves. 
you would get faster doctor visits. You'd have the best doctors, the best surgeons, uh, longer visit times, less wait times. But it's never going to happen and it's going to continue to get worse in this country because of what we are doing. We tolerate shitty behavior, we encourage shitty behavior, and then we shame people when they try to change that. Until we in this country realize how good it is and start taking care. I mean, I'll tell you right now, if I was another country, if we didn't have the military, speaking of the military, it's like two out of three um, draft age males in this country aren't eligible to, to be in the military because weight and mental issues. That's sad. This is the perfect country to attack. Nobody can run anywhere. They'll sit inside. They'd be out of breath too fast. That's ridiculous. And it's just going to continue to get worse. All this technology, all this shitty food we eat here, the lack of motivation, the lack of exercise, the lack of doctors telling people the truth about what is going to happen to their bodies is mind-blowing. So for those of you out there that think I might be the uh, worst nurse in the world, at least from what people have said uh, online, go fuck yourself. I don't care. Continue to say that and then continue to do your nursing the way you want to do it. Just make sure everybody's comfortable and they've got their pills instead of telling them what they need to do to get better. Ridiculous. Anyways, I'm already 47 minutes into this. I didn't think it was going to go this long. Um, I hope that anybody who did listen enjoyed it. Ms. Aberrant, thank you for participating. I appreciate your... Uh, your comments and I would love to talk to you again at some point maybe we could set up a uh, maybe I'll do a show with just you and we'll just talk and let people uh, because more people need to hear this and maybe uh, the advice I give you would uh, get you on the right track it sounds like you're on the way um, and then get you to be able to motivate other people to do the same because that's what we got to do we got to take care of each other and we can't take care of each other if we can't walk, if we can't get out of the house, if we're on 30 fucking medications. Let's all support each other losing weight. Losing weight. Drastically. Let's stay around for our children. Healthcare is only going to get worse if we don't. Um, for tonight, I'm going to call it... Um, and Miss Aberrant, I hope to hear from you again. Thank you everything, and y'all have a good night. Bye-bye.